everyone! I am crazy excited for today's guest, so I'm just gonna go ahead and snap him in. It's Ed Kimber! <laughs> oh. Baker extraordinaire, cookbook author, and the first winner <laughs> of the Great British Baking Show, i.e. The Great British Bake Off. That's what they call it here in the UK. Yes! You were on season one. You, I won. You won season <laughs> one. Yes. This man has some serious baking chops. Some of you might actually know him from his Instagram because it is amazing, at the boy who bakes. And we are going to, you are, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna record you. You are going to bake something super delicious. Yes, so I'm gonna show you a really easy summertime dessert, something that shouldn't take too long to make and is very forgiving. It's rustic. So we're gonna show you how to make this, which is a really simple strawberry cornmeal galette. It's a basic uh, kind of pie dough, but with a little bit of coarse uh, cornmeal in it, just for some texture, uh, and then you just Toss on top of it some strawberries with a little bit of corn flour and sugar. It's super, super easy. The more rustic it looks, the better. If it looks too perfect, it doesn't look, I don't know, tasty. I can't help but notice that you are not using measuring cups, but you do have a scale here, so tell me what is your... So, Americans, yeah. let's talk about this. <laughs> it is much easier, I think, to use a scale than to use these things. I have them because I work with America sometimes. <laughs> this is the sort of thing where if you're doing a scoop of this, a scoop of that, it's not gonna come out the same every single time, where if you weigh everything, it's going to be roughly the same every single time. I just think it's so much easier and more accurate. So I am on a crusade <laughs> to try and get Americans to use scales. Ed Kimber, spokesperson <laughs> for Scales Worldwide. All right, now that that's settled, let's add the butter. Now you've got the butter in there, you're gonna to toss it together just to coat it in the flour, just because that means it won't stick as much. And then, once you've got it into the pieces, you're just gonna use the pastry blender, same way you would do any pie dough, and just push it down. Ed's preferred method is to start incorporating it like this, then switch to hands at the end to get it to that nice, crummy texture. That's our finished kind of dough mixture. It's still got a few bits of butter in it, but it's mainly blended in. And then we're gonna add about four teaspoons of water. Then stir with a knife. And that means you're not really working the gluten too much, because you're not stretching it at all. And you just want to bring it together until it starts to form clumps. And with every pastry recipe, generally every pastry recipe, you want to go little bit by little bit because you can always add more, but you can't take away. But you really want to bring it just until it starts to form small clumps. <laughs> Bring that together with our hands just until it forms a uniform dough. Form it into a round and then pop that into the fridge until it's firm enough that it's rested, makes it easier to roll. It means that the gluten that you have worked relaxes so you get a much nicer finish. And now it's filling time. Strawberries. I like things in season. For one selfish reason, they just taste better. Thankfully, we're in the middle of strawberry season. He's adding 500 grams of sliced strawberries. You can do this with basically any fruit whatsoever. So later on in the season, you use stone fruit. You know, you could use uh, blackberries in more autumn time. Um, there's so much you can do. And also, you can do these savory. So just use what's good at the time because it will taste better. Simple, simple reasons. And add two tablespoons of sugar. So because we're not blind baking the pastry and strawberries have a lot of water, we need to add something to help uh, kind of gel that uh, moisture together. So you can use lots of different things, but the easiest thing that most people have at home is either plain flour or corn flour, which Americans call cornstarch. And you'll just give that a little mixy mixy. We're just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. Then your dough comes out of the fridge. Roll a couple of times each way and then turn it through about a quarter. And the key is never go over the end or the back because that's when you end up with uneven surfaces. So just roll, turn, and if you ever feel the dough sticking, you can just add a little bit more flour, it's fine. But we're just gonna roll it and we're gonna try and keep it round. So the reason you actually do the quarter turns is it should help keep it in a nice round shape. You just want to kind of, just be confident, keep it moving because I think as the dough sits, it's more likely to kind of stick to the surface because you give it time to work fairly quickly. There we go. If we let this bake as it is, probably still gonna get the kind of soggy base to the pastry. So there's one key thing to do, and you can do different things. Um, you have to sprinkle something underneath the fruit on top of the pastry. So I tend to use ground almonds because a, they don't have a very strong flavor, so they don't kind of get in the way of anything else that's in the tart, but they're also absorbent, so they will soak up that juice. You almost get like a frangipan layer at the bottom, 
um, and it just means you end up with a really nice crisp pastry. But some people use cake crumbs, some people use kind of um, cookie crumbs like Nilla wafer crumbs or something. He's putting down roughly 100 grams of ground almonds. And you don't want to cover the whole thing because we are going to fold the dough over. And then add your strawberries on top of that. Try and get a nice even layer as you do it. So now that the strawberries are all laid out, we're going to fold the pastry over. And this is where some people get really worried that it's not going to look perfect because you've got a ragged kind of edge around the outside. But the joy of a galette is it's meant to look rough, so it doesn't really matter. So just working a bit at a time, you fold it in and then you take another bit and you fold it over. So you kind of create this almost crimped shape. Just thought of something you could do. Ooh. If you wanted, one of my favourite combos is strawberry and fennel. So what you could do if you wanted is brush the crust with egg and then sprinkle it with a little bit of fennel seed and it'd be really nice. But today I'm just gonna to stick to my classic and do egg and sugar. So make your egg wash, just whisking together one egg then brushing it over the pastry. Then sprinkle turbinado sugar, or they call it demerara sugar over here, on top of the pastry. We can then throw that in the oven for about half an hour. Uh, and basically this is one of the ones where there's no real test, just when it's nice and golden. And the filling may bubble a little bit because there's a lot of moisture, but really you're just looking for the colour on the pastry. Oh my gosh. Ladies first. Oh, thank you! <laughs> Gentlemen, let's I've see. I've had it before. <laughs> it's boring. It's boring. <laughs> Cheers. 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 This is summer. Yeah. Mmm. So you have to use good fruit because that's why, because it just tastes mm. like summer. Mm -hmm. The texture of that crust with the cornmeal, mm -hmm. it is so good. It's flaky but tender. Mmm. But it has a little bit of crunch to it. I love it. Don't forget to go to Ed's channel. He has all kinds of amazing stuff but we also did a video for this collaboration. We did, we did a recipe from your book, which is the avocado book, and we're doing a black sesame cupcake with a avocado frosting, which is unusual, but I'm intrigued, so come and have a watch. And Ed, tell them what not to forget. Keep it quirky. Yeah, do it. <laughs>